teachers and fellow students. Not very often do we come across individuals who believe in trying something new and, create, and leaving a trail rather than following created paths. As privileged members of the new International School of Thailand, we have this wonderful opportunity to witness the presence of one such esteemed guest who has been a significant part of the science fraternity. Professor Aaron Shikanore from Israel is a distinguished research professor in the Faculty of Medicine of the Techn Technia Israel Institute of Technology, Haifa, and a member of the advisory board of the International Peace Foundation. Professor Shikanore earned his Master of Science degree in 1971 and his doctorate in medicine in 1981. In 2004, he shared the prestigious Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Professor Irvin Rose and Avram Herschel for the discovery of ubiquitin mediated protein degradation. It was the first time that an Israeli had won the Nobel Prize in the field of science. Besides being awarded the Nobel Prize, Professor Chikanover shared the prestigious Albert Lasker Award for Basic Medical Research, which is the second most prestigious award in life sciences and medicine and the Israel Prize, the highest recognition bestowed by the State of Israel. While most scientists in the late 70s and early 80s were concentrating on understanding the way proteins build cells and control the living body, Professor Shikanover and his colleagues were interested in the way unnecessary proteins were being destroyed. They discovered that this process uses a small protein called ubiquitin to mark the proteins that have to be degraded at the right time and the right place in the cell. Ubiquitin fastens, fastens to the protein to be destroyed, accompanies it to the proteasome, where it is recognized as a key in a lock, and signals that the protein is on the way for disassembly. Thanks to their work today, it is now possible to understand how cells control a number of central processes, like DNA repair, quality control of newly produced proteins, and important parts of the immune defense. Their work has led to the production of a potential life-saving drug, for the treatment of multiple myeloma cancer of the bone marrow. It has also led to the development of drugs which could help fight cervical cancer and cystic fibrosis. We are extremely fortunate to have Professor Shikanover among us to talk about science and technology as a noble language of peace, the journey to a new drug development in our time. With great honor, I now hand over the podium to Professor Shikanover. Thank you. Hi, well, good morning everybody. Um, well, the introduction already told what I did, so uh, I can switch subjects. Um, I thought that uh, I shall divide my uh, brief uh, conversation with you, my brief introduction, and then I'll open it uh, to discussion, um, into two parts. Um, the first part, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Because I think that in many ways uh, there are some things to learn it uh, about living in a small country, developing a career in a small country, making, making it to the international uh, platform, and also about career choices, what's ahead of us, what to do, what to do once you are approaching a crossroad, where to turn left, right, back, continue forward. And then in the second part, um, I shall tell you a little bit on the challenges that are ahead of us in medicine and then on maybe on the dangerous, I wouldn't say dangerous, maybe on some bioethical highlights, some bioethical problems that we are facing in the biomedical uh, um, community but mostly that all of us are facing because we are uh, people that are developing drugs, that are involved in research, in basic biomedical research are doing it for the sake of uh, people all over the world and uh, we are all facing uh, some problems, so I thought that this would be also, I think, a nice space for a beginning of a discussion. So let me just tell you briefly about myself. So I was born in 47 in the pre-state of Israel. Israel was at that time part of the British uh, Empire, or whatever you want to, to call it. The Brits left, uh, they were forced to leave actually, this was not their home. They were forced to leave in uh, 48 out of the military activities that was developed by the, at that time, the Jewish population. And Israel was established uh, as an independent state uh, in 1948. I was born just a few months before. to parents that immigrated from Poland before the Holocaust, so they, were, they served their lives. And I grew up almost all my life in Israel, except for some periods, uh, mostly in the United States, for training. 
and kindergarten, elementary school, high school, and then in Israel, uh, as you know, uh, we have to go and serve in the army to have uh, to make a national service in the in the military, and this is not uh, Israel. Unfortunately, still doesn't enjoy peace. It has not enjoyed peace for one day since its uh, establishment, and the military service is meaningful. Uh, it's a tough military service, and the chances of being involved in war are quite high during the period that one is serving. And at the very beginning of my service, I was involved in the 73 war, um, and I served at that time in the Navy. I was a military physician at that time. So in Israel, because the military is such a professional, uh, and it's a national service, the military derives its professionals, like engineers and physicians and other professionals that it needs, from the universities in a very sophisticated way. It allows, you, you can serve in the army either immediately after graduating high school, you are, you are now in high school, so at the age of 18 you are going to the military for three years, and you can just do, you can undergo an officer's course, you can serve in the infantry, in the armored forces, and wherever you want, wherever the army needs you, or you can go first and study. And you can go and study according to the army needs. You are not in the military. If you want to study medicine, you can go and study medicine before the military service, and then you are coming and serving as a military physician in the army. So, instead of serving three years as an infantry soldier, you are serving three years as a military physician. And the same for engineers and for, for um, uh, Eastern Studies experts. Israel also needs, obviously, uh, uh, Eastern Studies experts, uh, experts in the Arab world, uh, intelligence, developers of all kinds of devices and so on, then they all go on their own to the Israel universities. Israel is a very well-developed university system, very strong research-based university systems. And uh, by the way, just to give you some idea, Israel is a tiny, small country. We are only 7 million people. And uh, the surface area, the area of Israel is also small. The historical Israel is only 20,000 square kilometers. So it's really tiny small country, the longest axis is only 400 kilometers, 260 miles, and the broadest point of the country is about 70 or 80 kilometers, 50 miles, so that's all, it's a rather long and narrow uh, stretch of land uh, on the very east side of the Mediterranean Sea. So after graduating high school, I went to the, to, to the medical school to study medicine, and then I served in, as a military physician in, in the Israeli Navy, and uh, at that time, the 73 war erupted, and all of a sudden I found myself as a battle physician, as an active uh, battle physician. But just to take you a little bit backwards, during my medical studies, uh, I, I, I had some feeling that medicine is not exactly for me. I didn't feel so well about it. And, and here I'm coming to a point that I wanted to, kind of the first message, that I wanted the, to give you about career choice. I didn't know why I wanted to. You know, if you decide to become a physician, if I ask how many, how many of you want to become physicians? Raise your hands. There are several hands here. Anyway. So, if I ask you why do you want to become a physician, and I probe each and every one of you, at the end of the conversation, you will realize that either you are somehow related to physicians, so your dad or your uncle or somebody in the family is a physician, or you just heard something about it, but really, we don't know what it is. I mean, you really don't know what it is to operate in the operating theater, to work in the cardiology world. We really, and for me it was the same, you know, I heard about it, my mother wanted me to be a doctor, and she thought it's kind of a respected profession, but I really didn't know why I'm doing it. Uh, and already during medical school I felt somehow uncomfortable with it, but then I decided to, to go on. But in the middle, I said, let's try another route. Let's try science. I, maybe science I like more. So I went and took a year off from the medical school. It's possible in Israel when you're studying medicine to take a year off and to do whatever you want to do. So I took a master's degree in biochemistry. And then I realized that that's it. Biochemistry, or the chemistry.
chemistry of biological processes is the something that I really want to do. This is what I want to do. But then I had my national obligation and I had to go to the army to serve as a physician because the military built to me. So I decided to go back to the medical school. I graduated medical school and I went to serve in the army as a military physician. As I told you, I was involved in one active war, which is the 73 a war which is, was a very heavy war with thousands of casualties, which for a small state is a lot. And I was involved in several marine battles, but uh, luckily uh, nothing happened at that time. And, um, and then when I was discharged from the military after three years, I still thought, well, maybe I still want to be a physician. I mean, I didn't... So I decided to go and uh, start my residency, my training in surgery. So I started my training in surgery, but after a year or so in the operating theater, I decided that that's it. medicine is indeed not for me. It was the will of my mother, but not my own will. And I'm going to science. And then I decided to go all over again. So I started everything from scratch. I went to graduate school. I had already an MD, a doctorate in medicine. But I decided to become a student and I became for five years a full-time student, a PhD student in the, the Institute of Technology, which is Israel's uh, best school of engineering. It's an excellent school of engineering. Based almost all the Israeli engineers that carry on their shoulders the Israeli industry. And Israel is living on industry. That's it. We don't have any natural resources. We don't have oil. We don't have uranium. All what we are exporting is our brains and uh, terrific industry, high-tech, biotech, electrotech, and uh, they all came from this uh, school of engineering. But, uh, so I, came, I went back to the same school, that, uh, uh, to this school, and did my PhD there. And during the PhD, we discovered the ubiquitin system that was just mentioned in the introduction. And then following it, I decided to continue my training. And typically, when you are finishing your PhD, you're going to a postdoctoral training, so I went to the United States, I went to the MIT, to what was then and still now the best department of biology in the world, in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I spent there four years, and then went back to Israel and started as a young scientist, as a young independent faculty member in the same institute that I graduated and I've been there ever since. So since mid-80s, when I returned from Cambridge, um, until this very day, I am a faculty member in the Faculty of Medicine of the Technion of this School of Engineering. And this is a unique School of Engineering because we have also biology, biomedical engineering, medicine, um, and, and so on and so forth. I told you all this story, not because it's uh, that you learn any details, but, be but because I wanted you to realize that career is flexible. And we are living now rather long life. I mean, the average lifespan in Western countries, in Thailand as well, for men is approaching already 80, for women is a little bit above, and we have a long time to spend in our career. And we are typically finishing our training at the age of 25 or 27. I mean, you're going to high school at the age of 18. You, in Thailand, you don't go even to the military, so by the age of 18, all of you will attend college or University, by the age of 22, you will have a bachelor degree. By the age of 23 or 24, master degree. 28, 29, you are a PhD if you will go on the track. And that's it. And then, or if you are going to medicine, by the age of 25, you will have the white coat and a stethoscope around your neck. And you will be doctors. And then, what you are doing, you know, and then for the next 50 years, you are going to do daily mostly the same thing that you did yesterday. And tomorrow, the same thing that you did today. So. It's become boring, and you will see, you are going to get bored. If you are not going to change and diverse, diversify, you are going to get bored. So the idea, I think, that one can learn from this uh, small story that I told you in the introduction is that if you don't like something, if you are not feel sure about what you do, just don't.